Whenever you see a story on TV about an aircraft lost at sea, and when the reporter inevitably says, however, authorities are still searching for the black boxes. Are you like me? Do you throw your flip-flops at the TV? First of all, the black boxes aren't even black. They haven't been black since the 1940s, so there's that. And then you think to yourself, but wait, when I lose my iPhone, there's an app that will tell me exactly where to find it. But the most advanced civilization in history can't find a giant airplane in the middle of the ocean or the jungle? Well, wonder no more, because commercial aviation has finally caught up to 21st century technology. And the FAA is using that technology to track every MAX aircraft all around the globe. Find out how they're doing it. Oh, and also find out why the FAA has actually had this technology in the works for more than a decade. That's next on Maximus. Greetings everybody, Maximus here. I hope you are all doing well wherever you may be around this great big world of ours. It's been a little while since my last video because I've been down in the bunker nursing a bit of a cold. Or was it a cold? Yeah, it was probably a cold. But you never know these days. But anyway, I'm glad you're back for another episode of Maximus Aviation. The Seattle Times is reporting that the FAA contracted with the Arion Corporation to use a system called Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast, or ADSB, to track every MAX aircraft in flight, streaming data from the aircraft two times a second to the FAA Technical Center near Atlantic City, New Jersey. The FAA is using the data to monitor the performance of the MAXs and attempt to preemptively detect any possible issues with the MAX as early as possible. This is the first time the FAA has incorporated a monitoring program in real time of any single model aircraft. The FAA has taken a lot of heat over their handling of the MAX crisis, and as well they should. However, they do deserve credit for their forward thinking over a decade ago in the aspect of real-time aircraft monitoring. In 2010, eight years before the first MAX crash, the FAA instituted a plan that would require all aircraft in the U.S. to have real-time monitoring systems installed in all aircraft, commercial or private, by the year 2020. This system is known as ADS-B. Canada was the first country in the world to use this service in 2019. In the United States, this system officially went online on January 1st of 2020. ADS-B is a much more precise tracking system than radar and transmits exponentially more data than radar ever could. And unlike radar, which can't track aircraft far out over the oceans, the Earth's poles, or inaccessible mountain ranges or jungle terrain, Ariane's satellite system covers the entire globe. So much so that aircraft anywhere in the world, no matter how large or small, will never be lost to history again. So what does the acronym ADSB stand for? Automatic. Messages are automatically sent out periodically. Dependent. ADSB relies on a dependable position source on board an aircraft such as GPS. Surveillance. ADSB provides radar-like surveillance services for air traffic controllers to provide aircraft position more precisely than radar. And finally, broadcast. ADSB will continually broadcast aircraft positions and other data to aircraft and ground stations. Now let's take a look at how it works. For decades, air traffic surveillance around the world has relied mostly on ground-based radar to detect position and monitor aircraft. This ground-based infrastructure is limited by line-of-sight obstacles and can be difficult and costly to install in remote or mountainous regions and is impossible to deploy over the planet's oceans. But ADS-B technology has eliminated these blind spots. Specialized ADS-B receivers have been placed on a constellation of 66 Iridium satellites, which delivers highly accurate real-time positioning information on appropriately equipped aircraft virtually anywhere on the planet. 
So in 2010, the FAA and other aviation regulators around the world announced global requirements for all planes, large and small, to have this capability installed by January 1, 2020. These aircraft will be required to install at the very least ADSB out, which automatically transmits an information signal twice per second to the area on satellites, allowing for instant location verification. You can think of it this way. Arion wants to become the Google of the skies, tracking and mapping every aircraft across the globe. I wonder if there will be a little display in the screen alerting pilots where they can find the next Starbucks. While on the smaller plane-based units, there may be a charge for any extra incoming information pilots may select, such as various weather services, special apps, or mapping. There is always a free outgoing emergency signal to report your exact location anywhere in the world. Every new Boeing and Airbus is equipped with an ADSB transmitter that continually broadcasts the identity of each individual aircraft using its pinpoint GPS location. Then each aircraft's trajectory, ground speed, latitude, vertical rate of climb or descent, as well as any indication from the airplane's system of an emergency such as a code flashing a TCAS alert or traffic collision avoidance system, an automatic warning would be detected and reported instantly via satellite to each airline's home base or reporting station. According to the FAA, they began a trial use of Ariane's system after the MAX was grounded in Europe, but still flying in the U.S. to test the accuracy of the system. The FAA said this helped them to make their final decision to finally ground the MAX in the U.S. The FAA has extended their MAX tracking contract with Arion after their initial 10-week trial. Under the scope of that contract, Arion will provide daily aircraft health reports on flights that took off the previous day. For each individual MAX jet, it will report how many times it took off, the duration of the flights, and any anomalies detected. Arion's stated goal is to eventually replace the world's current antiquated radar-based air traffic control systems with a more accurate global ADS-B system. Its investors include some of the world's leading air navigation authorities, including those of Canada, the UK, Ireland, and Italy. Arion's work with those authorities has already allowed air traffic controllers to shrink the spacing between aircraft flying across the North Atlantic. As of now, the closest aircraft over the North Atlantic can be to each other is limited to 10 minutes separation or 80 nautical miles. The Canadian and British air traffic controllers are starting a trial to scrap the current massive system of organized lanes across the North Atlantic in favor of more efficient individual ADSB tracking. ADSB can also be used to track the precise location of a plane if it goes down. In 2014, when Malaysian Air Flight 370 disappeared over the Indian Ocean, this technology would have been perfect for precisely and instantly locating the position of the jet or exactly where it disappeared. Unfortunately, at the time, this system was not yet in global operation. The FAA has not yet committed fully to the Arion system, but in November announced a strategic partnership that grants it broad access to Arion's real-time air traffic data to allow the agency to evaluate applications, including air traffic control automation, airspace safety analysis, and accident investigations. The max tracking and offshoot of that partnership will provide massive amounts of data on routine operations and alert to anything out of the ordinary. Well, given how far technology has come in our daily lives, I'm surprised it took this long for the technology to come to commercial aviation, but at least it did. And while we're on this subject, I'm sure you two like me wonder why we don't just have GoPro cameras in the cockpit to provide an exact picture of what is happening on the flight deck during an emergency or crash situation. Well, that's a question for the pilots' unions. That offer has been on the table for years now, but pilots consider that too invasive. But as we know from YouTube, more and more commercial pilots are filming their flights with permission of their airlines, so it's just a matter of time before this technology will be instituted on all flight decks of commercial aircraft. Well, that's it for me. I'm off in search of a nice cup of tea with some honey and lemon. But now it's your turn. Let me know what you think down below. 
And before you go, as always, please be sure to subscribe, like, share, and ring the bell. And remember, leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you next time in the air. Yeah, this is Maximus.